Hey! Okay. Okay, guys. Okay. Relax. <laughs> We're here. <laughs> You're going to have to let us know, too, if uh, the audio is okay <clears throat> for um, for what you can hear, because obviously we can't hear ourselves. We're, we're talking to you yeah. directly via and the audio. We have a window open right now, too, so it's cars driving by and... Yeah. So yeah, let so us know if you can hear us. Let us know if you can hear us. Um, if you can't, we'll change something. We'll, we'll right. change the um, <laughs> we'll change the window around. Anyway, I'm gonna do an intro. What's up, guys? Chris here from Focus Prospecting, and today I have a special guest named Pioneer Paulie. <laughs> Welcome. We, we are stoked to be here. Um, look, if you don't follow the channel, and you're tuning in for the first time. What we're doing today is essentially a digital version of a meet and greet. So the whole idea uh, on about this is to get in contact with as many people as we can in uh, real time. Now, we wanted to do something like this in real life, but logistically, it's quite difficult to do that sort of thing, uh, as we discovered when Paulie came to Australia. Because <laughs> he was, he was uh, inundated with messages to meet up, just like I have been when I've come up. Uh, when I've come over to Canada land. That's a great thing Canada. about Canada land. Um, now, we are going to... We're doing this live, right? So there could be some mistakes. I want to get that out of there. First and foremost, there could be issues with the feed dropping or the laptop crashing or, you know, all sorts of things yeah, like that. And there's also a big delay. So yeah. when you guys send messages, we're not getting them for another like, 30 seconds after. And it's actually kind of trippy because I can see myself a minute ago and it's throwing me off. Yeah, he's but. experiencing Australia time for like one minute in the future. <laughs> um, anyway, the whole purpose of this is to answer your questions. Now, I put up a post a couple of days ago uh, regarding what you would like answered. And we're also going to touch on some subjects that we get asked all the time with our channels. So all we're going to do is basically jump straight into it. And I'm going to start off with a question I've been getting asked ever since I landed here in Canada and, and let everyone know that I was here. Am I going to meet up with Dan Hurd? And the short answer is no. We tried to we tried to organize it. We gave a couple of weeks warning and everything else, but Dan couldn't get the time off. So we unable to do that. I blame his beard. Yeah, I blame his beard too. I think mine's longer, but we don't know because we can't meet up. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, oh man. So, this is one of those things. So, unfortunately, no, there will be no Dan Hurd collaboration video coming for that. But I don't think it really matters because Paulie pulled out like half an ounce of gold the other day, which was just absolutely mental. <laughs> uh, I want to go back there so bad. <laughs> so bad. But the water is really cool. I don't really tell people that, but no, the water is. It's pretty cold. It was freezing. It was trying to act all tough and stuff on my camera. He was like, I'm not cold. I'm not cold at all. And then, like, I was you like, get warm. your lips are blue. <laughs> Purple. <laughs> Purple. No, no, when, no, when you're sniping underwater, you, you get warm. It's just like getting water in your boot if you have a good fitting wetsuit. It's like getting water in your boot. Like I said, it's it warms up. You don't notice it. And it happens with your body. But um, that day I was scuba diving. I was at, like, 26 feet underwater. And I was really, really cold. But... It paid off in the end, so that was sweet. It seriously paid off in the end. <laughs> the other thing that uh, I wanted to touch on as well was about me getting in the water sniping. Now, all jokes aside, with the do whole, it. 
Yeah, I know, right? You have to do it. All, all jokes aside with um, it being cold in the water and whatnot, it was less about the cold and more about the fact that I got tattoos. Yeah. <laughs> bloop, bloop, bloop. yeah. Um, you can't go swimming for about two weeks after you get tattoos because you, you will literally ruin them. So I can't do that. But, you know, next time. Next time I can't. You can watch me find all the gold. That's no problem. Yeah, I don't mind that either, though. It's it's good. It's it's a, it's a strong gold pornography channel when that happens. <laughs> so they're, like, they're the two that have been getting asked all the time time since I've got here. Uh, Paul has got a question that he wants to answer from um, any of these things coming off. Wild Bill says, Paul, I grow a beard. It's not really a question, but I know. The only reason why I haven't been growing a beard is because I need the mask to stick. Um, mm. I have not tried it with a beard, but from what I hear, that's it doesn't you don't have a good seal and I don't like I like to be able to see it, but <laughs> Richard, yes, yes we did. <laughs> with a spoon. <laughs> what would we do? <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, yeah, did. yeah, yeah. I dropped the nugget in the sink. Yeah. We recovered it. The, the rest of the gold that fell in the sink, we didn't recover, but that's okay. <laughs> uh. um, now, uh, more questions. We want to really answer the questions that are... Uh, bear spray tastes like... Uh, it's spicy. spicy air. Yeah. Spicy. Spicy, <laughs> spicy really air. Spicy. <laughs> yeah. What we, um, what we really want to answer is some of the questions that we get inundated with, like, on a day-to-day -day basis on our channels. Now... I've woken up before to 950 comments. I went to sleep for like six hours and woke up to 950 comments. And the questions that we get asked again and again and again. Um, so that's sort of why we wanted to open this up. And we'll kind of get into that, I suppose, now. We'll, we'll probably piss Bob around for an hour. Yeah, Go let's uh, get to the... The goodness. The goodness. I'm looking for some on the, um, I'm looking for some on the old mobile phone. Okay, while you do that, yeah. I hope everyone's feeling good, everyone's healthy out there, and you guys had a really good day. Um, over here, it's nice and cold. It's sunny, but it's cold. It's starting to get on to our winter, but Mr. Australian over here and some of you guys, I saw some of you guys are from Wodonga. That's where Chris is from. Yes. What is it, like 50,000 degrees? Yeah, um, I think it's about 52,000 oh at gosh. the moment. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I expire at 38. <laughs> go I took him to 44. <laughs> he didn't die, almost. almost. Right, I've got a question I want to answer um, here, which is, uh, if I pronounce your name wrong, I do apologize. Michael Marquand? Michael Marquand. Yeah. Marquand, yeah. Yeah, all right. He says, if I find quartz veins and a rock heavy in iron, am I close to gold? Geology across the world changes so dramatically. Um, like, it is super hard to say yes or no either way. First thing you need to know is quartz is super common. Um, it is like, it is the, I think it's the second most abundant mineral in the world uh, currently. It's, it's silica, so it's really common. So is iron. Iron is ridiculously common. And those combinations uh, together, because it's all to do with faulting, are also really, really, really common. Uh, the number one thing that you're really looking for is, is, a mixture so you're looking for sulfides you're looking for iron you're looking for just a bunch of different minerals and and crystals and and heavies that are associated with it if you watch 911 mining's channel they have excellent geology sessions and that's probably a better place to start is to start educating yourself on not not what you traditionally see on the gold prospecting shows like Aussie gold hunters where they find quartz gold reefs and stuff but finding um finding out the information about how gold forms in your specific area because it's all different so quartz and iron does not mean gold it, it, there's a lot more places where those things form that don't have any gold at all so that's probably your number one thing learn about what happens in your area and then go from there don't worry about hunting quartz reefs unless you get a hot tip from your dad uh, from 1974, and then 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 follow it. <laughs> you got a question, Porty? Oh man, they're just flying through here. Which is faster, a horse or a dog? I'd say <laughs> go a dog. But here, let's let's see if I can find a dog, dog, dog. A proper question. <laughs> is there a um, tattoo of a treasure map under your beard? Yes, that's why I don't shave. <laughs> <laughs> Am I a? <laughs> is Porty a vampire? <laughs> hmm. No comment. <laughs> no comment. People are asking, are my teeth real? They're real. Um, these are real fangs. My left one used to be bigger, just like my right one, and they were really dominant. Um, they grew in when I was in elementary school, like in early grade school, and I got made fun of for being vampire forever, but I never got offended because 
Vampires are sweet. Yeah. I get to eat. You live forever. Yeah, I know. You know, yeah. so I find gold, luckily not silver. Um, I can sleep through the day. Sleep in a coffin? Yeah, we can do that. Yeah. I bring in SPF 55 from Australia, so it's no, sweet no, no, to no. go out. 55,000. Oh, don't tell them. They will want some. All the vampires <laughs> are a vampire play. Get a painter, <laughs> get a free SPF 55,000. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, right. I got one here from Darren Norman. Uh, he said, new to prospecting myself, based in Geelong, everywhere I seem to go within an hour and a half or so has been flogged. Uh, do I need to walk harder to get to a spot or just think smarter? And it's always think smarter. I found some of the best gold on Rooney Creek, right, where people park their cars. Um, it's, it's learning to test pan and learning not, not to read a creek because every creek and river, as I discovered here in BC, is different. Um, but learning to... <sighs> Phone call. <laughs> learning to... to test pan properly so where to take your samples from where to take um like how to take those test samples out of the river bank or the river bed um or up or high on a bench will majorly influence the way that you discover gold if you're just scraping off loose gravel from the top you're never going to find any gold but then if you're not testing sand on top of bedrock you're also not going to be finding gold because there's plenty of gold in that stuff and these are those little tricks so my number one thing is don't worry about how flogged the spot is just be willing to test pan and test everything don't worry about what people write in books or what we say on youtube or anything like that just test the more you test the better the that's all he did today was just test and test and test yeah and well, i found like three good bits yeah he did and all yeah. i did was wine and wine and wine <laughs> i found some but i mean it chased me with bear spray <laughs> yeah but guess you got it now <laughs> i like this one which walk one's about, this one walk about prospecting is there somewhere paul he hasn't dived yet that he wants to Ooh, um, there is there's a, a few cliffs at the along the souk river here on vancouver island <laughs> Um, there's a bunch of cliffs there that I really do want to dive, but the issue is just getting down there. It's uh, And then finding someone who's willing um, to go down there with me. Uh, I know a lot of divers and rescue divers and stuff too, but uh, most of them are prospectors. And like, if I were to go to these spots, I would want to bring someone along um, to help me film so I can do some more of those cinematic shots. But I don't want them to, uh, being distracted, finding gold and stuff, so that's always hard. But yeah, so definitely there is. There's waterfalls, there's some places, even in Australia that I saw, but... It all comes down to um, just access, really. Yeah, it's like everywhere. I mean, there's plenty of places that I want to go digging holes, and they're all like in national parks and <laughs> people's property. Yeah, people's and... property and stuff that you just literally cannot go to. You can just go at night. Um, ben LePage sluicing here is illegal because of the salmon fish, and we saw some of them today, which is very cool yes. in Australia to see that. But you cannot sluice. Uh, you can high bank, I believe. You can high bank as long as you're a certain distance away from the the water, and you have your own tailings pile and pond, and it needs to settle before it hits the river. Yeah. It's something to do with the fish, but I believe the winter floods and panning does more damage than sluicing. There, I said it. <laughs> <laughs> One for BC. Come on, let's put sluicing back to being legal. <laughs> I like um, Shay Kerry uh, Williams. Uh, you, who got you both into hunting for gold, and who's your idol? So I think a lot of people know my story, which is which is I have PTSD, and a good friend of mine took me back out in the bush uh, and taught me gold panning as a way of coping, and it all started from there. So Derek, first and foremost, he's a recluse; he doesn't watch this stuff. You'll never see this video. He sleeps in forty-four degree weather. Yeah, he doesn't. He does not. He's so chill. Like he's so chill. Yeah, man. Uh, he's like I think he's late seventies or early eighties now. So he got me into it, and he's my idol. Like if I could be half as good as Derek. Like, he's amazing. He literally goes out to Reedy Creek in Victoria, Australia, and he can pull out, like, half an ounce with his pan in a day. In one day, he can do that. And I've, I, he's the only person I know that can do that. So he's my idol, and he got me into it. <laughs> I think one of my idols um, is, again, is the same kind of same kind of story. Um, it's the same guy who got me into it, and it's my, uh, my cousin Kenny. I used to look for arrowheads all the time. For those of you who haven't seen, like, my very, very first videos, I was looking for artifacts and arrowheads and stuff. But long story short, I wasn't allowed doing it. I got in some trouble. So I uh, followed my uh, cousin Kenny along to do some prospecting along the Souk River. And this was only around two years ago or something. And it wasn't until I found my first tiny little piece of candy <laughs> where, I, where I got like super hooked on it. And I came back day after day after day. And I just kept doing it. Took all the spots, kept doing it. But he's my idol because he does 
he has an incredible work ethic. Like he's always in the water. He's always sniping. He's always not well. He's always doing something there, and uh, he always finds really good pieces of gold. And I admire that because I, I want lots of gold too. <laughs> and, I don't know. Yeah, same kind, of, same kind of story. There was a question there by Rambo Pun that just disappeared out, which he goes, "Please, please, please tell me where to find gold." And it's a question that I get every day. Like every where to find gold? gold? Where to find gold? I say it starts in Google. I don't. Yeah. Want sound, I don't want to sound like. A prick, but I mean it. Yeah. It literally just you got to find like everyone. So everyone wants you to do this. Like everyone goes, tell me a good spot that I can go find gold. And what you have to end up doing is telling them that you need to go onto Google and research your your archive history, which is like, yes, <laughs> 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 yes. <Yeah, yeah. laughs> oh my train of thought, it just yeah. <laughs> you have to do your archive history, which is newspaper articles, old uh, mining reports, and things like that that you can usually find in your national library archives. Uh, and then from there, you'll get names of mines, and you'll get names of creeks and rivers and stuff. And then you can sort of see which ones are accessible and closest to you from there. And then you keep going. Um, what everyone wants us to do is to take their hand and put it directly on top of the gold and that's impossible because we don't know where it is we only find out when we go to the creek and go test panning which is exactly what like i was talking about before you've got to learn to test pan so man if you want to find gold research national library archives start there find names research those names and yeah that's, that's how you'll do it see where you can find see where gold has been found before and just start there if you look up like gold yep. claims in let's say your area and there's gold claims around chances are there'll be gold there See if you can find those guys' names and see if you guys can go with them or something. You know. That's, yeah, that's, for sure. That's how I met some of my best mining partners was just doing that. Yeah, and you don't know who you're going to bump into. Like half the people I meet and I'm friends with now, I bumped into doing that. Like just going out to a creek and people are like, oh, I've seen your YouTube channel and now I'm really good friends with them. Like, but it just it takes that first step. Don't be afraid to go out there and try it because if you're afraid to go out there and try it, you're gonna. Yeah, don't be a bummer. Yeah, don't be a bummer, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, I saw, I saw one of the oh grizzly. Everyone's asking about grizzly. He's at home in Australia. We have really strict quarantine laws. There's no way I could take him over here. So he's at home with Zoe, chilling out. <laughs> so very soon you'll be back. Yeah, I'll be, I'll be hugging him, and giving him love. <laughs> <laughs> Is there gold on Mars? I have no idea. I've never. There apparently is. <laughs> apparently is. According to Elon Musk, there's gold on Mars. Is there? Um, yes. He makes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, I trust that guy. You trust Elon Musk? Yeah. Sure, why not? Oh, Nathan Cobb. <laughs> Cheers, bro. Oh, now I've got it. I You're rich. I've been bribed to answer a question. I think. <laughs> I like this question. Is yeah. there any way to send you both a care package from California? Um. Yeah, so I've got a P.O. box in Australia, which is in the link. Oh, it's in the description below. Um, Paulie is yet to get a P.O. box. I have, and I need one. But he's getting one. I'm trying to pester him to do that. If you can email me, I can, I can hunt it down and yeah. we can talk about it. So there. send Paulie like a PM or a DM. That's I'll just tell website. everyone my house address right now. Yeah, <laughs> come over, chill out. <laughs> um, uh, I am enjoying BC absolutely immensely guys like it's yeah. phenomenal here it's very very pretty like it's ridiculous <laughs> <laughs> someone actually asked on, on the uh one of the posts that i put up if i prefer australia or for both of us if i prefer australia or bc i i personally prefer if i could have canada's weather in australia i, <laughs> I that would be my ultimate goal because I love the gold in Australia. It's super rough. There's so much reefing to be done out there. And you don't have to worry about claims in Australia. Yeah, it's super <laughs> chill in Victoria. You can just go out and do whatever. You don't have to worry about claims or anything else like that. Um, if, but yeah, I'd say if we had your weather here. But not, not like... Not the full yeah. Australia. So you, he, you still want BC weather here? I still right? want BC. I don't want. <laughs> I don't want a lot of rain, but the rain does make it green. That's yeah, so green here. Like I got here, and I was like, everything's so green like for real <laughs> why is everything so green <laughs> yeah we're looking for questions guys send send tell more us questions. about the squirrel i saw it morgan huh tell us tell everybody about the squirrel experience that you had oh so no no rabbit drop off <laughs> so in canada for those of you who don't know there is a problem with people taking rabbits and dropping them off next to a highway and a hospital so bad that they're undermining the hospital and the council had to put signs up. 
apparently the rabbits were eating away at the foundation of the bridge, and people... <laughs> I, I don't know enough about it, but there's a sign that we drove past. Canada's weird. And he w he didn't stop laughing. It said, no bun no, no rabbit drop-off. And he was like, what does that mean? <laughs> well, I, I mean, explain. Right. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> um, I, Brett Reed, Vogus, curious why you chose to take the gold monster over the SDC. Really simple. No one would insure it. Um, I, I got quotes for insurance, um, but it wouldn't cover it in certain areas and whatnot, and it's a four and a half thousand dollar detector, and I can, I'm comfortable with accidentally losing, like, a, a nine hundred dollar detector, it would be shitty, but, oh well. But just imagine the gold you would have picked up if you did bring it. We, it, we know, I know. I yeah, keep bugging, I keep it would have been amazing, like, I really wanted to bring the SDC, because it is a weapon of a machine. I actually just got a steel phase booster for the SDC, and a heap of different accessories for it, so there's going to be some mad views, like, like reviews and things coming your way. So you're going to have to keep your eyes peeled for that. Um, is the gold monster actually any good? I'm thinking of grabbing one. Yes, actually, oh, this gives me... Don't the get him started! <laughs> yeah. No, no, if it finds it works... Yeah, gold moss is awesome for gold, but everyone asks all the time about which detectors to buy. The first thing you need to do, seriously, the first thing you need to do is pick whether you're coin hunting or gold detecting. If you are primarily, like 90% of the time, going to be coin hunting, buy a coin machine, like an Equinox or an AT Gold or something like that. If you are going for gold, buy a gold machine. Start at a minimum at like a gold bug two, like Paul uses a gold monster or an SDC or something like that. You like you can use a gold machine to hunt for coins, but it'll be really annoying. And you can use a coin machine to hunt for gold, but it'll also be really annoying because what you're doing is paying to be able to hear the targets. And most people forget <laughs> that they actually forget that like the the reason that it's a gold machine is that it's been designed to help you like deal with mineralization. It's got better audio tones and stuff with small pieces. You know, it's one of those things. It's just pick what you want to do and then go with that choice. <laughs> and if you want to do both, buy two machines. You want one that's aerodynamic that you can throw across the river. It's very important. Very yeah. very important. And solid enough that you could hit it with uh, an FJ. <laughs> oh man <laughs> it's <a> joke. Uh, <laughs> let's see this um, da, 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 da. oh man there's so many comments yeah once again I'm getting people talking about Dan Hurd we tried but Dan didn't have any free time so we can't again it's Dan's beard's fault yeah it's Dan's beard's fault it's yeah. too small he couldn't He couldn't get up to come <laughs> needs to grow a bigger beard <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to make Dan grow a bigger beard. <laughs> <laughs> best <laughs> best gold real. mat. That's a good one. I like that. Best gold mat. Yeah. Um. So, Lyndon is a is a subscriber of mine. He's a very smart man. He's a very smart man, and Lyndon. And I talked extensively about how uh, sluice matting has essentially been evolved over the last couple hundred years, like continuously from sheep's fleece all the way up to dream matting and stuff that we've got now. Uh, the biggest, honestly, the biggest losses you're ever going to encounter in a sluice nowadays is if you set it up wrong, irrespective of the matting that you use. And if you don't wash your rocks properly, whether it be in a high bank or a river sluice, <laughs> they're two main losses of gold. So... All of them work. Uh, carpet works well, but make sure you dry it out and bang it on like something hard into a pan. You'll get more gold and dirt out of it. After you just you finish. slap it. You just slap it. Just <laughs> slap it like it owes you money. <laughs> yeah. Give me candy. Um, yeah, so carpet works beautifully. Minus moss is exactly the same thing. Uh, dream matting is fantastic. Drop riffle sluices, they all work, man. But wash your rocks properly and learn how to set it up. Properly. Which one's your favorite? Uh, honestly, Dream Mat. Yeah, Dream Mat. Super simple to set up and super easy to clean out. I've never Dream. used a Dream Mat again because sleuthing is illegal here. But if I were to high bank, I, I, I don't know enough about the Dream Mat. I believe it seems to work great, but I also like seeing the gold in that black mat. But um, I could be losing gold too, but nah, I'm the wrong person to ask. My opinion. <laughs> Do you find more lead than gold? When detecting, yes. <laughs> How yeah. often do you find gemstones or mercury? I find mercury every session I go out. I find gemstones apparently a lot, but I can't I have, see them because I'm colorblind. I have um, about five pounds of mercury here. Um, let's not bring it out, though. That would be a bad idea. Oh, there it is. Oh, no, there it is. 
I have five pounds of mercury. Half of this was pulled up from the river. Yeah. That's a lot of mercury. So, yeah. How old is Paulie? Well, he's a vampire, so it's undetermined. Oh, that's, that's <laughs> a, it's a super secret. It's a super secret. That's my twin sister. <laughs> yeah. She's just as old as vampire years. Um, Fourteen. If you had to choose, would you rather crevice or go gold sniping? Crevice sniping. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's how that goes. Yeah. Uh, sniping. Oof. How would a gold claw go up there? Um, gold claws are all right. Look, everyone asks me about why I don't use gold claw anymore, and it's no real technical reason. It's just that I like <laughs> using a round pen. <laughs> um, so they'd be ah. fine, man. They'd be absolutely fine. Paul Cormer, I'm apologize if I said your last name. I'm wrong. Paul Cormer. Tell us about your film career, Paulie. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Good. Um, hmm. Long story short, I was an actor and stuntman in uh, North Hollywood. Not actual Hollywood, Los Angeles. Oh, that'd um, be modest. Yeah. It, it, it was the porn area. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Secrets. <laughs> Secrets. Um, Boundaries. Yeah, I was an actor and stuntman out of uh, Vancouver. I did that for a while. Um, did lots of movies, Planet of the Apes, Supergirl, stunts on, on, uh, like, I have an IMDB page, like, like, I don't know, I did a lot of acting, a lot of stunts and stuff, but, um, I slowly got out of that, because YouTube essentially just started paying better, <laughs> to be honest, and I just liked finding gold a bit more, it was really hard, like, the film industry is fun, it's, like, you get to light yourself on fire, you get to run around, you get paid, drive police cars, do crashing, meet celebrities, it's, it's a lot of fun, but it's a lot of work. It goes up and down a lot. Um, one week you're rich, the next you're broke. Um, it's always, it's just like what they call the struggling actor. It's just a really, really tough gig. But don't get discouraged for those of you who want to become actors and stuff too. It is a tough gig, but it, anything's possible. I just decided to basically back out of it because I thought YouTube would be um, better. And from doing YouTube, and I feel like I have a big enough following now that if I were to go back into the film industry, I could get stronger auditions. I can be a stronger candidate, but... What's yeah. a movie we can see you in? Oh, man. You were in Planet of the Apes, weren't you? Yeah, I was in yeah, yeah. New Planet of the Apes. I did that. I was in, yes, yeah, Supergirl, uh, Prison Break, um, a lot of stuff. Minority Report. I don't know. There's tons of TV shows. Uh, yeah, that's good stuff. There's two questions I think come up, which was, um, I think it was Place and Chase's asking about ground balancing the, the gold monster. Really easy. Just find an area of ground in front of you that's about a meter square, and if it's got a... That's a Harley. <laughs> I'm going to shut the window. Yeah. Find, find an area about a meter square that's got no targets in it, and then just raise and lower the coil gently over a varying section of that ground, and um, it'll ground balance itself. If it won't show, if it won't go quiet, you've got it running too hot, and just back it off one notch and try again. And the other one... Twilight. I had an audition for Twilight. You were in Twilight? I wasn't in Twilight. Oh. I had an audition for it. I actually spat on the script supervisor by accident. It was a, it was a crazy... Audition, yeah. <laughs> ben Helsing, that's yeah. another one. Nice. A lot, of vamp, a, lot of vamp, <laughs> a lot of vampire stuff. Yeah. Uh, man, come on. I saw this question. It was good. Where was it? How tall are you? No, I am 6'4 if I stand up straight on a good day. <laughs> He's taller than me. Uh, yeah. Dredging in Washington. We yeah, need more go. of Chris's photography on his channel. Do we? Captain Morgan. Yeah, there he is. Ah. Yeah, um, he's a good photographer. Yeah, no, that's just a side hobby, man. I, I like it. It's fun. I never want it to become a business, though. It's one of those things. It's just like, it's something I really enjoy doing, and I don't want to ruin it with money. <laughs> he'll, he'll take a picture of something that I've never seen. He'll be like, look at this tree, Paul. Like, you can show me this photo. I'm Check like, out this highly toxic lizard fish. <laughs> it's so cool. For those of you who don't know, he went on a walk. And um, uh, he, like, he left me alone for a day. I left him alone for a day, and he went and walked down what's called the Galvin Goose Trail. It's the world's safest trail in Canada. In Canada, you don't have to worry about any animals. There's, like, bears and cougars and stuff, and that's, that's one of them, right? But coming from Australia, you can't look in a direction without a spider jumping on you, right? Um, and he walked down the trail. He's picking up things, looking at stuff, and he happened to pick up the most venomous lizard there is. And I didn't even know they existed here. Yeah. 
There's, it's got the same toxin excreting from its skin as the blue rimmed octopus, which literally just kills people every year in Australia. And I, I was just walking around with this thing in my hand for like ages. And this lady was like, yeah, that's really toxic. And I was like, is it? And she's like, yeah. I'm like, oh, damn. And, um, and if it were me, if I was with them and I saw that, 100% I would have been, I'm the kind of dummy who just put it on my face, hey, I got a lizard on my face. <laughs> um, Adventures Life, who has the biggest nugget? <laughs> Wait, gold? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, no, the gold here in BC is huge, and, and the geology here is right for it. Where I am, uh, nuggets of this size are not not common at all. They exist, but they're not common. I'd have to go over to WA or oh. the gold triangle to find something like that. Um, this is a silver nugget. Oh, yeah, that's a sexy one, too. This uh, is um a beautiful copper nugget that was just sent to me. Yeah, that's cool. Who was that from? John? I, was it John? John. I want to say Carr. Yeah, I'm going to say Carr. John Carr. <laughs> so it's thanks cool. again for watching. And this is a beautiful nugget of melted aluminum from a beer can. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's the question. I saw, I just remembered it. Um, someone I can't remember the person's name, so I apologize in advance. Someone said, why is Paulie's channel so much bigger than mine, considering Paulie started following me first? Hmm. And, but I know the answer to that because I've got to hang out with this guy for the last three weeks. And it's honestly, no, it's honestly, uh, it's twofold. Does he smell good? Uh, he smells so beautiful. Mm. So it's threefold. Yeah. He also looks <laughs> handsome. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, his work ethic is unreal. So, like, the level of effort that goes into making all these videos versus mine is biblical. Like, period. You cannot even comprehend the amount of work this guy actually puts into the videos. I would give up our days hours before before he um before he will and, and that's a really really big important thing so the quality of paul's videos is far above mine and the second thing is his like social media game is off the hook oh yeah yeah like uh, i can't do what he does period so that's why that's like, I'm like, I'm why. like <laughs> super ocd like when it comes to like I don't know. I'm like, if I ha if I find a piece of gold or something, I have to let Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. I have to let everyone know, and I'm always updating. I'm just, I got too much time on my hands, I guess. But yeah, uh, sometimes a video takes me three days to make. But <laughs> kicking your ass, <laughs> um, kicking your ass. How often do you both cash out your gold? I don't. I um, don't either. I put it in the bank. So we both have safety deposit boxes and we just store it there uh, for future. Like, you never know, like, when you need some sort of, you know, ounces or whatever to help pay for a car or a house or an emergency hospital or whatever um, it might be for me. So I just leave it there. I, the way I look at it is if you're a coin hunter and you found a really old coin, like, would you sell it? Yeah, yeah, that's a perfect way I of mean, putting it. I you're, mean, if you're into the sport and you like collecting, you know enough history, you're not going to want to sell that thing. But if you're just doing it for the money, first you're in the wrong sport, you're in the wrong thing but um yeah it's like me when i find a piece of gold it's so hard for me to get rid of sometimes i'll do a giveaway i actually haven't done one in over a year um that's kind of that feels good to do but um yeah for the most part i like to hold on to it and throw them at chris and drop them down my drain <laughs> chris what i just put it down the drain oh no you didn't no no i i just did what <laughs> that's pretty much how that conversation went um Tricks for how both of you pick and choose your locations. Everyone's yeah, up. we actually covered that earlier. Uh, I do it by library archives from newspapers and stuff. That's where you should start. This is funny. Ian Wilden, Paul, can I please, please, please have your sister's number? <laughs> I can't do that. <laughs> but I can. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry, man. <laughs> can't do it. Yeah. Um, a lot of people asking me how many tattoos I have, and the answer is lots. I don't know. One. Yeah. He's one. a he's a giant tattoo. I just one big tattoo. No, I don't. I actually have no idea how many tattoos I've uh, I've got. Wild Bill, I've never bought paid it either, ever. Yeah, actually, no, me neither. I've wanted to, but I've never. <sighs> actually, I have bought paid it. I was in Barkerville. For those of you who know, who know um, British Columbia, north of Vancouver, you can go to a place called Barkerville. And it's a place where you can do some panning and some troughs and you can buy some pay dirt and stuff. And that's where I bought pay dirt when I was like 11. <laughs> Tazzy Boys Prospect and your subscribers. Yeah, your subscriber numbers aren't rising with this video. And that's cool because I do this channel for me, not for anyone else really. <laughs> I just like making videos and putting it out there. And I've been fortunate enough 
to actually um to like help a lot of people with the PTSD awareness stuff that I've been doing and I'm, I'm stoked about that so irrespective of how many subs I've got if my channel saved one life um job well done I think I think that's the best way I can look at it <laughs> Yeah. Coming to the gold show in WA this weekend? No, man. That's hey, like... I'm going to WA. I, I am. Oh, oh yeah, you are. You're going to Western Australia. Yeah. Um, I don't have a date booked yet, but the plan is to fly into New South Wales. No, is that right? New South Wales, Madonga. No, no, that's yeah. like a in between Victoria and New South Wales. The loose plan is Paul is going to come visit me and then fly over to Western Australia and do some detecting out there. That's Find a very some loose plan. Pieces of candy. That's that's the goal. But, yeah. Um, also melt because they're super hot over there. <laughs> Uh, yes, our toilets do spin the other way in Australia, and this one's a good one. Have you ever been hurt slipping or falling Me or in you? the river? Both. Hey, it's John Farr. <laughs> hey, man, <laughs> I got your nugget. I got. Oh, yeah. I sent you an email. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thanks again. I really appreciate that. That was really cool. Yeah. Yeah. No, that was awesome. That was a sick. I was holding the water shell, and I was like, Ooh, "Yeah, that's shit." Hey, man. John Farr. He's in here, right? Shout out to him. He gave us like a mortar, the tip of a mortar, 250 cal bullets, because everyone knows I love bullets. Um, bullet. Yeah, well, look at that. Copper nugget. Um, a lay, like a, a Hawaiian lay. I thought that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that was, that was good, so man. Cool. That was real good. You'll need that sunscreen. Yeah, if you go to WA, you're going to have to. You're going to have to. Yeah. Well, are you prospected? Do you open one? Nah. Open nah, mind. that's so random, man. Like, there's no way of actually knowing, and I, I just, I can't. Nah, it, the puzzle's got to have a solution, you know. <laughs> that's, for me, that's the big thing. Tell me the best metal detector, please. I ran over this before. You have to decide. Um, you're either going to have a coin detector or you're going to have a gold detector. Enough, you can yeah. buy a hybrid, but you'll regret it. Um, so VLF or pulse injection. Yeah. So what you have to do is decide gold or coins, and if how deep. Yeah, and how deep. So if you want to go nothing but gold, and you want to find the best nuggets, you need a PI machine that's going to cost you a minimum of about four, four grand, four and a half thousand dollars, and then you go from there. If you kind of just want to maybe get into gold, you buy like a gold monster or a gold bug two or something like that, and it will cover you for around a thousand dollars for okay gold. And if you just want coins, something like an Equinox eight hundred or a six hundred, probably the six hundred because you don't need the features in the eight hundred if you're not going um if you if you're not going buddy what's it called all right am you I should come just book a ticket i right, book a ticket am i going uh, to australia when he leaves i don't think so i i might be in washington state for march 21st and march 22nd for a gold show i might be speaking but it's not nothing's confirmed yet but um i, I might have to do that first <laughs> Um, do I watch the show Aussie Gold Hunters and when are you going to appear on it? I have, I actually started a casting interview for that for their third season. They didn't want me then. Then they've been trying to get me ever since and I don't want to go on that show because they keep like, to be honest, they keep kind of faking it and it's really annoying. I, I hate watching that. I, I like watching real stuff and if they made a show that just happened naturally, I'd be all over that and I'd take them up on their offer, but I don't want to do it. So that's just the, the short answer there. Uh, portable vacuum cleaner for crevices. Nah, not in Australia because it's classed. It's a grey area of law that could be classed as dredging. I think you can do it here. I mean, yeah. I don't. I don't. Wanna, I don't. Don't quote me on that. I don't. I don't know really the rules to vacuuming, but I would. If it's portable, you're not making a mess. I think I would. <laughs> what do you? Oh yeah. Do we have day jobs? Um, YouTube's my job. Yeah. Honestly, I've been doing this for I don't know, six months now. Just doing YouTube. It's. It's pretty cool. I was doing uh, part-time security, and I worked alongside police. I did the whole night shift thing. I worked dispatch um, in between doing my acting in here. Um, when I first moved here from doing the acting, I was uh, doing some acting part-time. I did security, I did, you know, that whole thing. But, yeah, for day jobs, I just do YouTube. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm not actually going to go into what I do for full-time work because I don't think it's – yeah. Yeah. For me, that's private. Um, yeah, my, my job's my – yeah. So I'm not going to go into it. YouTube's not my full-time job. It, it's just something that helps pay some bills sometimes. That's about it. <laughs> um, oh, I just saw one there. Oh, yeah, you can rent SDCs if you come to Australia. They're super easy to get. They'll cost you like 100 bucks a day, and you can just come and get them, and just out, off you go. Oh, yeah, I've got to stop doing that. Can you find gold in any river or creek? No. 
Gold's, <laughs> gold's everywhere, but in panable amounts, definitely not. Um, so it's only so many that you're going to be able to actually go out and, like, find visible gold in, uh, and otherwise you're going to basically just have to narrow down those areas like we talked about earlier through doing research on Google and, and mining maps and, and your local prospecting clubs and that to find the creeks that you can find gold. But there's no harm in going down to any creeks in your area and actually test panning. Like, you know, might as well go and try because you never know. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my God. I knew he was a stripper. Oh, my secret's out. So, uh, Polly, what artifacts did you find in the past? Um, stone tools. So, uh, First Nation stone tool that. To <laughs> First Shut. Nation stone tools. So, I found, yeah, arrowheads, bone bone stuff, axes. I found. I've actually uncovered a a body in a burial ground coming out of a, of a creek once, but that's a whole other story. Mm. Um. Yeah, basically just stone tools, beads, jewelry, that kind of stuff. Some old coins, but I'm not a coin collector, so I don't really know too much about it. But yeah, just First Nations artifacts and stuff. Yeah, that's cool. I've seen some of Paulie's arrows. Yeah, sent him an arrow. Yeah. He's used to be an archer. I, yeah, I've been an archer for 20... I was like full-time archer, running my own range and stuff. Yeah, he was so, a full-time target. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> for years. <laughs> and he sent me an arrowhead, and I was like, oh my god, this is the best thing I've ever had, ever. Uh, which country has better weed? I uh, Weed? Weed? <laughs> Let me let me tell you guys. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'd say it probably Afghanistan or Vietnam. But, yeah. Um, that's opium, isn't it? Opium. Yeah. Afghanistan's got the opium fields. Yeah. <laughs> you hey, go to both countries and let us know. That would probably be the best way to do it. <laughs> yeah. Well, pot's illegal here. Um, I've had nothing but bad experiences with it. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, does fly gold normally deposit before or after black sand? With it is the short answer. Um, so this is really hard to describe. You have to kind of see it. But hunting layers of black sand is a really good way of um, finding both gemstones and gold. If you can mix it together, if you can find it mixed together, then you're probably close to something and you're going to have to find the concentrator. So you have bits of black sand everywhere in a creek, but if you can find the concentrator, so something like an obstruction or a crevice or whatnot, then yeah, then you'll be on it. So just look for a good heavy mix of it. If you get a, like a couple of teaspoons or a couple of tablespoons of black sand in your pan when you're panning down, yeah, <laughs> then you're going to be on it, I reckon. I want to get some funny questions. Let's ask some funny stuff. Yeah. Something to make people laugh. So what do you okay, what do you guys really want to know? Yeah, what do you really want to know? I'll try to answer as like best I can, but it has to be like not yeah. bad enough where YouTube decides not to yeah. put this up. It can't be nasty. Let's have some fun. Yeah, have some fun. <laughs> Let's see we've, asked, we've answered a lot of like prospecting questions, which are all, all pretty much on our channels. Like if you have questions, just go back through our videos, man, and you'll find the answers to them. Let's see this. Most embarrassing tattoo. That would be the one on my... No. Uh, <laughs> the snake. <laughs> the three-inch snake. <laughs> two. Uh, the two and a two. Uh, I don't have one. I like all my tattoos, to be honest. It's like one of my things. I don't have anything that I regret. I like this tattoo, but it's my last name, and I don't know why I got my last name. Um, maybe in case I forget or something, but... Um, I'd say this one. This one says Law of Attraction. It's something I kind of believe in, so I can't regret that one. Grizzly is not a leg humper. He's really good. He doesn't hump legs. He, he The only things I've ever seen him hump are his hip My leg. leg. Yeah, Paulie's leg. He, he's a vampire. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, no. Yeah. Oh, does Paulie believe in the red socks? He does, because I found a nugget in a place that Paulie's never found a nugget wearing my red socks. Where was this? In the place that we went to that you've that we can't I don't know if we can name it. Um, it's on the leech. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. The place. The place. The tributary. Ah the, yeah. oh yeah, yeah, he did. Okay, there's yeah. a really popular trip creek that runs into another creek and um the history books say it's really good. People are finding like ten gram to thirty one gram pieces regularly back in the rush days. I've searched this thing up and down, left and right. I found nothing. Not even lead. Nothing. He goes in this and my, yeah, my red socks. I was like, oh, you guys walked over a dish. Here, go look at this. <laughs> so that was cool, yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Have you peed on camera in your wetsuit? 
Yeah. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> not on camera. Oh, which... oh no. <laughs> we might have lost it. We might have lost Let's it. Let's go see if we can go back. We'll see. We're just going to keep talking just in case. Just in case. Technical difficulties as usual. Uh, full Wi-Fi. Well, we might be coming back. We might be coming back. We'll just still stay on the we, same. Yeah, feet. yeah, yeah. Oh, are we back? Are we on? Are we on? Let us know if we're on. We have no idea. Yeah, we're we're bugger.